Hey guys, welcome back to the Storkville YouTube channel. I was in the middle of making a video for the main channel on how the recalled jack stands got recalled again. <laughs> That's the highest level of competency. Uh, and, but I kept getting sidetracked because I'm, I'm going through this email from Harbor Freight. And Eric Smith, Smid? Smid Eric Smith started calling himself the owner and founder of Harbor Freight Tools. And he didn't used to do that. So... I got sidetracked by the thought of when did he become the founder, which is a really odd question because usually the founder is always the founder. We don't rewrite history and put in the name of a new person as the founder. And if you Google search Harbor Freight founder, Eric comes up, but also his dad, Alan, comes up. Now, usually if a father and son start a business, the father is probably taking the lead on that one. He probably has more experience either in the business or life experience. His name is probably on all the documentation. In this instance, Harbor Freight was started when Eric was 17. So if you're a 17 year old and your dad starts a business who's probably in his 40s or 50s, maybe 30s, whatever he is. Your dad's the founder. The 17 year old kid is not the founder. And you can see the Harbor Freight page they've updated the page itself to say owner and founder here, but the little title um, meta tag for it still says chairman and CEO. I was trying to look through my old emails to see, because you get Eric Smith emails every once in a while when there's an update at Harbor Freight or something, but I had deleted them all. But I know that there is a turning point where he went from calling himself the chairman and CEO to calling himself the founder. I guess it makes him feel better, feel more important, like, oh, I built this from the ground up. The funny thing is, in 2018, his dad sued him because there's a big family dispute that basically alleges that Eric stole the company from his dad in a roundabout way. And in this article, anyways, it calls, it says, by company founder Allen. And it's actually kind of interesting that maybe we'll do another video on this whole lawsuit because I haven't fully looked into it. And I don't even know what the exact results are or how much of it is public information. But it's just funny that his own dad is suing him, which doesn't sound good to begin with. Here it calls his dad the founder. He was only 17 when the company was founded. What are you doing, fool? You are not the founder. You may be the CEO. Maybe the president, you may be all these different titles, but your dad's the founder. It's your dad. Also, as we look at the page, uh, the Wikipedia page, so the company was founded in 1977. In 1985, Eric was named president of the company at age 25. So wait a second. You're the founder of the company. You're the founder. But from 1977 to 1985, you're not even the president of the company? Why would you later inherit that title and not have that title to begin with? You know, it doesn't say here, but something tells me I bet from 1977 to 1985, Alan, the founder, the true founder, may have been the president of the company. I find it all hilarious because just in general, when looking at Harbor Freight's marketing strategy, anyone who's looked at their coupon flyers and their sales and everything, it's just so over the top, uh, you know, liquidation sale. They'll have tool disposal notice and just all these really over the top things. And I'm assuming there was bad blood before the fact, but if you've been the president for 30 years or whatever it is, why just the last couple years become the founder. What took you so long? Why not take those reins earlier? I wonder if his dad died recently. Well, I don't know if it's the same one. I don't know what his middle initial was, but died in 2016. So just after his dad dies, he becomes the founder. That's interesting. I don't think that's how founding companies really works. And I like the first re <laughs> result here. Harbor Freight CEO accused by parents of looting company. <laughs> And now here this says Alan Smith started the company in 1968. Oh, hang on. We got to look at this. 
When he founded Harbor Freight Tools four decades ago, it's unlikely Allen expected it would end up like this. Blah, 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 blah. In the culmination of almost 15 years of growing friction between father and son, well, 81, his wife, blah, blah, blah. Where does it say started in 1968? Okay. Harbor Freight is one of Camarillo's largest employers with 1,000 employees in the county and 7,400 nationwide. Allen started the company in 1968 when Eric was an eight-year-old. He began working for the business as a teenager, and as time went on, was given more responsibility, according to the lawsuit. Allen says his son began pressuring him for controlling interest in the business as far back as 1996. The suit alleges Eric assured, reassured his father that if he transferred ownership, nothing would change. I did read that on uh, the other website, too. He's, Alan said he sold controlling interest to Eric at far below market value because his son had promised, uh, I don't know, certain things, whatever, but that's so funny. Why does the Wikipedia page say it started in 77 and this said it started in 1968? Well, here's another article from the San Diego Union Tribune that says, well, now I lost my spot where it said... 1968. Oh, jeez. And here again it says, Alan Smith, 81, founded the business in 1968. It was originally called Harbor Freight Salvage. And they sold returned tools, returned merchandise. And it later changed, they dropped the salvage part. And then they first opened a store just selling their returns, which... <laughs> Selling the things that were probably broken or missing pieces. Kind of like Amazon warehouse deals. <laughs> Maybe that's where they got the idea. So this is all about the lawsuit again. I was more I'm more interested in this circumstance about the the foundation, the founding of Harbor Freight. Although maybe we should do a separate video on this little family feud. So I started out the video saying that a 17-year-old going into a business with his father. His father is really the founder. He's he's the one controlling things. He's got the reins of this thing. The 17 year old, come on, let's be honest, he's along for the ride. He's lucky he's getting this meal ticket, or what turned out to be a meal ticket. But if we go by the other date, he was only like eight or nine years old when it was started. And in that instance, come on, that's like the people that go on TV with their five-year-old on Shark Tank or something, like, look at my five-year-old, they invented this. Yeah, mm-hmm. Your five-year-old invented that. You're right. I'm sure. They marketed it. They created this business. They did everything. And they were five. Well, they're just a genius. No, I think the parents had something to do with it. Anyway, I just think this is absolutely hilarious. Maybe this is a, uh, a post... What's it called after someone's dead? Post... Post... Post-mortem? Post... Post... Uh, post-death thumb in the eye to his father. That's what I feel like it probably is. That's alright, it's 2020. All things about history change. It's funny, you think history is something that is set in stone. It's concrete, it's already happened. But no, people people are altering history as much as they want these days. Alright guys, that's it. I just thought this was hilarious. that he, He's not the founder. Get the hell out of here. You're a fraudster more than anything. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Subscribe for our subscriber. I'll see you guys next time.